Hey, I almost said good morning, good morning. I'm so used to the mornings. Um, but good evening, good evening. All right, so I just wanted to um, get on here and like really, really, really talk about transformation and where you can mess up and derail, where you can pull back and come out and be like, how you like me now type of thing. Um, but I'm just going to share some of the areas where I messed up at in the past and some areas that I'm learning. So, uh, if you saw my post earlier, I was just like, yo, Joseph, not everybody needs to know what you're getting ready to do. Uh, if you're anything like me, um, in the past, I would, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm working on this. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And what that did is it just, it did not serve me well. It did not serve me well. Um, there are some things that are happening now behind the scenes that will not be shared anywhere. Not on social media, nothing. This is my time to, hey Jane, this is my time to go and be with the Lord and with my tribe and get things in order behind the scenes. Because I know if I were to come out and be like, da -da 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 -da, this is my goal and that's my goal and I'm doing this and I'm doing that, da -da 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 -da, it would not serve me well to do that and it would not serve you well to do that either. Especially if you have a past to where maybe um, you were like, squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. And then, you know, you take time away. You get your mindset right. You get all, you know, you start moving in consistent order. But then you're going to have those people that try to remind you of how you used to be. So that's why I'm saying Joseph. I'm calling it Joseph because in the Bible, Joseph had this really big dream. Joseph told his brothers and his brothers brothers sold him into slavery and then joseph spent many many years in prison and all this other stuff and that can happen when we're so out there sharing our dreams to people not everybody that is around us is celebrating us so one thing i've done like this past i would say past two months is i've gone kind of quiet. And instead of talking so much, I'm observing more. And I'm figuring out, okay, not everybody is celebrating me. And that's okay, because I don't celebrate everybody. Um, but you know, you just have to figure out who is around you, who is in your circle, what personalities are there. So, there are many different transformations one can go through. So first I'm going to talk to my weight loss community transformation. And I want to express to you, please have grace for yourself. Um, you know what? You mess up on your meal plan, one meal, just do better the next. But to say, well, screw it, I can't do this because I messed up on this one meal plan or I am I missed something over here, I just to hell with it, I'm giving up, I'm not doing this, I'm not good at this, that's not going to serve you. So begin to learn to have grace with yourself. Once you begin to learn to have grace with yourself, you realize I'm realizing I did not get like this overnight. And this is not going to be an overnight where I, God, I wish I would be like uh, the I Dream of Genie or boop and 150 pounds or whatever falls off. That's not going to happen. What is going to happen is you making a conscious decision to do better than you did the previous meal, to do better than you did the day before to move your body more, to say, you know what, I, I love me. I am worth taking care of and getting a support system. And yes, guess what? This may be your 10th 
thousandth time of trying to get healthy, lose weight, um, all that. And you may have fallen and your knees are dirty and all this other stuff. And you know what? That's totally okay. The whole thing is you fell, you get back up. I listened to this um, Gary and Jones and, uh, oh my God, my mind's going. <laughs> um, Blair Murphy, thank you. Uh, Gary and Jones and uh, Blair Murphy. And they're, the whole thing was you fall down, you get back up. You fall down, you get back up. And just, I want to encourage you to do that. So what? So what? You tried to get healthy last year and maybe it didn't work out and you're freaking 20 pounds heavier than you were when you first tried. So what? Get back up and try again. That's all. Get back up and try again. Do better, do better, do better. Get established in supportive communities. Get away from those that don't think you can do it. You're already battling in your mind whether or not you can do it. How, uh, how do I know if this 10,000 and one time is going to do it? How do I know? I failed all the other times. Why should I even try again? You're already battling that up here. So get the hell away from the people who are waiting for you to fall. Maybe your husband doesn't understand. Oh, we're going to go to the gym again. Or you're going to sign up for the gym and you're not going to go. Or maybe your kids are like, huh, really? Do you? Or maybe somebody else is like, do you really need to spend money on those weight loss products? Um, so I don't know what you're facing, or maybe it's just you up here. But when you begin to pull back and you take stock at who is around you and who is for you, who's just tolerating you, who's just kind of, I hate to say it, there are people who are just waiting for us to fail. It is what it is. But when you can say, I have grace enough for myself and I love myself enough to take care of this temple that I have. I love myself. Hey, James, I love myself enough to try again. Even if the husband doesn't think I can do it. Even if the kids don't think I can do it. Even if I have a freaking friend in the skies and disguise that you remember the show that movie mean girls oh god we can be so horrible to each other um even if i i have that or even if i'm surrounded by someone when i lose two pounds they want to announce they lost three or four i've had those friends too that they just can't let it be that you're rising up they gotta keep pushing you down because that makes them feel better so or you know what I, i'm serious i'm on weight loss products and that's working for me. And that's also providing me an awesome community of support. That's working for me. So find what works for you. And you do you. Stop asking for permission to show up in your own life. And you do you. All right, so now, that's transformation in the weight loss arena. Let's go to transformation in the business area. <sighs> Let me tell you, I've written eight books. I have been on numerous international podcasts to share my story. If you don't know my story, uh, very quickly, within a five-year period of time, I left domestic violence was an uh, instant single parent to three very small children. We were got in our shelter. I'm thinking I get to rebuild my life now. And then I was diagnosed with cancer. Fought the cancer for four years, thinking, okay, now I'm cancer free. Six months later, then it was kidney cancer. All while being a single parent, all while living in shelters and um, public housing in a really scary neighborhood. All of that. But let me tell you, that gives you life lessons. So when I say I'm a transformational coach and I deal with life issues, it's because of the crap I went through and I learned how to trust God for who God says he is. 
I learned how to fight back when people are trying to one up me. I learned how to recognize when I'm around people that just don't think I can do it this time. That gives me fire, by the way. I, I kind of like that. I kind of get a little rush off of that because then I'm like, watch me work. Um, so maybe you didn't go through all that, but so here, here I am, you know, all these years, I've written all these books and done this and done that. My biggest hang up was I didn't want to throw my hat into the big boy ring and really go after speaking engagements and stuff that would, you know, make me travel. I didn't want to travel. So God would be like, I'm going to, and people would prophesy to me. It was crazy. God would be um, telling people, I remember Dr. Veronica Walters. She looked at me and out of the blue, she's like, God is going to take you over the seas from country to country to share your story. And I looked at her and I said, uh -uh. you are not hearing God correctly because God knows I'm afraid of the heights <laughs> and God knows I'm afraid of the ocean so he wouldn't make me do that so all these years i basically have been in disobedience because i was too scared to conquer my fears so then i got on a plane and i flew over to um colorado and i'm like oh wow look we landed in colorado i didn't die i did not die it is amazing <laughs> so then i'm like okay all right I'm not as scared as I thought I was, but then I was like, oh my God, I don't want to leave my kids. I'm always finding an excuse to not do what I knew I was supposed to do. And when we are not in obedience to God, then the people that we are destined to go spread the good news to, the people that we are destined to go help transform their lives, yeah, somebody else may show up in our place, but they're not going to do the job that we would do because we were destined to do that. Jeremiah 29, 11, right? So I really just had to, and lately God's been sending me on these little bitty trips so I can leave the house and I can come back and know that, oh my God, the world, because you know, sometimes us moms, we feel like we have to run the show and I come back, the house is cleaned. The kids are still alive. The husband's done amazing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I don't have any more excuses. So like, I just, I have reached this point of surrender. Like, okay, God, here I am. Send me dear God, Jesus in heaven, Mary, Joseph, and all of them. Uh, even if it's going in an airplane for a long period of time over the ocean where I know there's sharks and everything else. I'll go, even if it means that I'm I'm leaving for a weekend or for a week so I can go speak life into other people, I'll go. So what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Because they're waiting for you. Now, on the flip side of that, there comes a time to where you surrender to God, and then you have to go through preparation. It is so crucial during that preparation time, you don't tip your hat. Like I said in the beginning, not everybody that is around you is for you. So don't tip your hat to everyone. Find your tribe. Find those that you can genuinely trust. And how do you know you can trust somebody with with your secret of God is preparing me for this, watch how they interact with other people. Watch how they interact about other people. Just watch. And if they have integrity, then you can say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm just want to share this with you. I don't know if you can help me. I don't know if you can be a vessel of God for me to help prepare me. Um, cause you know what? We can't do life alone. So stop, stop trying. We're not an island. And then you would just ask them, Hey, I can, I can use some help. Can you help me? Or I'm really excited. I want to share this with you, but don't share it with anyone else. Find those people and then start preparing. You know, if you want to go out and be a public speaker, 
start now on getting your signature speech together. If you want to be an author and start pitching to the big boy publishing companies, start now on honing your writing skills and find somebody to help you, um, you know, teach you on how to submit to the publishing companies. And so that, that was another thing too, like, I've written eight books, but I've self-published those. And people were like, I have one book in particular that so many people were like, this needs to go to the big publishing company because they can do what you can't. Um, and I was like, no, that's my baby. I'm not relinquishing control on my baby. How dare anybody? <laughs> Because that book was about the five years that I had explained in the beginning. So it was a personal book. And I was like, how dare anybody suggest I make edits to it? <laughs> or what if they want to change this character? It's based basically on a true story in my life. So again, it was control. It was control. And I'm not going to tip my hat. So, um Doing this Facebook Live is kind of hard because I used to be like, oh, I'm doing this and I'm doing that and God showed me this and God showed me that. And I've become so very guarded um, because I know uh, things are happening and I, I also know to protect your space. Uh, but I just really felt to get on here and talk to the other Josephs and tell you, Shh. not everything needs to be said to everybody. Not everything needs to be announced. Um, I know my, it's so funny, like my Facebook, everybody thinks I share everything. I've just gotten really good at what to share, what to share it, and what not to share. And now I'm learning to do that just in my um, personal relationships. There are going to be a very select few of people that during my preparation time, that I will share things with and the rest I won't, but I will still do life with them. But until this has finished cooking, this is going to be in secret. Your transformation a lot of times is going to happen in secret, in private with God. Because there's going to be things that, uh, you know how I think this is one of the most beautiful but most dangerous prayers Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and point out anything that offends you. And then you just really have to get ready because he starts pointing this. You have control issues here. <laughs> you have fear over here. You have anxiety over here. You're holding on to that anger over there. Do, 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 do. And when, when you're like in the thick of him transforming you from the inside out, you don't want a lot of people around a lot of times because <laughs> it's not a fun experience because you become, um, what do they say? Like, uh, the coal and then, and then the fiery furnace and the coal becomes the diamond that, that, that is not a good process to go through publicly. Uh, but again, get your tribe, even if it's one person, it's fine. All right, so just continue doing what you're doing. Surrender to God. If you know that he has got a call on your life and you have been fighting him, understand whether it is through your fear, your insecurity, your not wanting to leave home, your um, not wanting to put yourself out there for fear of what other people are going to think. Um, all of those seem like legit reasons, but that's just disobedience because He's waiting to send you out so you can help somebody else get free. So just think about that. So let's just recap. If you are on a weight loss transformation, know that you can do it. Yep. It may be the 10,000th time that you tried it. Have grace with yourself. Love enough for yourself to get up and to try again. Get around a healthy support system. If you are about ready to like chase after that, that calling, that dream that God has given you, 
and you're leveling up in your business and things like that, some of that stuff needs to be done behind the scenes. And be extremely selective with who you share information with. And the biggest thing is, I know you can do it. Feel free to inbox me. I would love to know where you are on your journey. And uh, so have a wonderful, wonderful evening.